So now I have to be careful to use words like industrial coating and corrosion instead of paint and rust. Horrible. Yeah. It smells like a cat. It smells like a cat? I mean, it does. <laughs> it yet. It's in the filter. that They impregnate it all. So every time you turn it on, you get this puff of mayfly stink out. That's... I'm getting used to it. Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. Uh, in this video, we're going to correct something that we did in another video. We upgraded the engine to 24 volts and it's been frying my switches. It first fried a cheesy push button, then it fried one of my good uh, uh, relay switches. So some of the comments had put a diode in because when the field collapses from a coil, it sends power backwards through the wire and it arcs across and that seems to be what's happening. So. We're going to try and fix it with a diode and we're also going to put a gauge in up here for the temperature of the oil in the Hundestead uh, variable pitch control system. Just one more gauge and a little bit more wiring on the engine. All of it. Got to deburr the edges. I have a tool for that but I like to use it in your knife. It's built out of D2 tool steel. That counts. Orange is a dimmer wire, it goes to orange there. Your common orange pile. Yeah. Look at that. It even says spare. What? You labeled I something? Labeled yeah, baby. You did or I someone got else a did? Label. No, fuck, that's my handwriting. Yeah. Doug. You, yeah, I know. You must have been sick that day. You just weep. You just go ahead and weep. <laughs> Call it done. Yeah, that looks great. So now all the floor comes out so that we can uh, put the sensor in back on the Wundestead. And wire it in. All wired in, there's the sensor right there and it just plugs into the hydraulic line coming back from the power steering pump before it goes into the variable pitch control unit. That takes care of what we come down here and check the most. The other thing is the pressure on the pump. I may do that next time, but so far the pressure has been holding good. It's just the temperature that we're not sure about. Let's give this a try. There we go. Oh, it's working. We'll make it warm up here. Well, it's taken some time, but yeah, now it's moved off the bottom, so we have a working gauge. Oil temperature on the understood, oil temperature on the transmission. See, it hadn't moved much either. Pitch off. Bring the speed down. Put it in neutral. Shut her down. Well, now you have to leave. Okay. <sighs> Diode job is next, but yeah, these short timers. So I'm pretty sure this relay's contacts are burned up, but I want to take it apart and see for sure. That is just welded shut. So what's supposed to happen here is this coil energizes, and when it does, it creates a magnet, and it pulls this piece of metal down, and that copper should move when this metal comes down and open up that contact there and close the other one but you can see that they're both closed they're just welded together that's what 24 volts and a lot of backfeed current did to it so the question is is it the 24 volts is doing that or is it this collapsing current off a coil that's doing that and my guess is it's the collapsing coil voltage. It's an amazing thing. I didn't know about it. Somebody put it in the comments. And thank you guys for doing that. So when you put 12 volts across the coil, which is there and there, it flows across the coil, it makes the magnet, it closes the switch, it closes this pin and this pin. This one is the normally closed. It would open these two, but when I'm not using that one. So I'm sending 24 volts across these contacts, and that's why they welded shut. It's either the 24 volts or it's the feedback from another coil, not this one. The other coil, or rather coils in my case, are that one down there on the side of the starter. That is the contactor for the starter, and it's a big coil. And this one here, which is a fuel solenoid coil. So it's a magnet too, yanks up, turns the fuel on, also shuts it off for the engine. Both of these are now 24 volt, but even when they're 12 volt, they would have been doing damage to these switches. And the first switch that bit the dust was this uh, start button here. There's definitely some uh, fire been in there. I see how this works. See, this has got a little tray that slides back and forth, and this little plate gets pushed up into this little plate, so they slide in contact with each other. That's not a good sign. This one 
when you push it, it fires both the fuel solenoid as well as the starter solenoid for the contactor. So when you let go of it, those two coils are de-energizing and sending a lot of voltage back through here. Maybe 100, maybe 200, you know, a lot of voltage. Not a lot of amperage, but a lot of voltage. And voltage is what needs to be there in order to jump an air gap. So when this thing air gaps, that voltage can come back across it. So that voltage comes back across at the speed of light almost. So that switch doesn't have time to open up and that arc burns those contacts as they're moving apart from each other and welds them together, it actually melts them down. So they can make better switches with better contacts on them or we can just stop it from sparking. You know, so we could go to Granger or McMaster and get a really expensive switch and hope that the contacts are made out of something fantastic that doesn't uh, melt when that arc goes across there or we can put a diode in and just stop the arc. That we can see if we fixed or not. So we're gonna do that. Why? Because a diode costs less than a dollar. So you can buy a bunch of them for six bucks off Amazon, and that is what they are. I've used them before, but I used them on the crane. Now on the crane, it was a new thing to me too, because you know when I push a button, I need one solenoid to come on, regardless of which button I push, but I need another solenoid to come on that's just for that button. A diode was the answer there. It's a long explanation, but you have to go watch that video if you wanna see a diode used in that manner. In this manner, we just wanna stop the stupid arc. So what these things do is they allow electricity to flow through one direction. They're like a check valve for electricity. There's a couple of different types of diodes. We were suppressing an arc off of a coil. Just get a big one. This is a 10 amp diode. And like I said, they're dirt cheap. These batteries down here are 24 volts and hundreds of amps. So it's two big 12 volt batteries tied in series here. So that's positive, that's negative. That should throw a good spark. Wow, it's working even with that amount of voltage. That's pretty good. So we turned around. Now this is negative going to the positive. That should arc. Yep, sure enough. Let's see if we broke it now. Turn it around. Nope. Yeah, that is a hardy piece of electrical equipment. Let's try it again. Turn it around. This is the direction it should flow. <laughs> it's welding using the lead there. And let's try it this way. Wow, I'm impressed. All that amperage of 24 volts and running it the backwards and it doesn't break it. But I'm told that these fail, they typically fail closed. So as long as the band is facing toward positive, you don't get a flow. You put the band away from the positive, that's the negative side, that makes sense. That gets an arc. And it's warm now, but it's still working. Ah, this one died. So you can kill them and they die in the closed position. So I've tested three of them now and two of them died and just became pieces of wire. So interesting to know, but that's hundreds of amps. So when the coil collapses, it's gonna send a lot of voltage back the wrong direction. And we want to take that voltage and just send it back across the coil, not to the switch. So we're gonna wire this across the coil with the band toward the positive. Well, I've been playing around with my diode and various coils. There's the big coil on the solenoid for the starter. And this is the little uh, relay and it has a coil in it. And I can actually demonstrate it on this tiny one, but the other ones, there's not gonna be a demonstration because I burn the snot out of myself doing it that way. Because if you get the diode backwards, it's just a piece of wire and uh, well, that heats up pretty quick. So the smell of burning flesh is the uh, indicator that you need to let go. So this jumper cable is going to come off 24 volt and I already got one on my starter over here so all this is grounded now. So this wire is hot and I can fire the starter by just doing what I'd normally do and make it like a switch. See that fires it. It even runs it because this not only energizes the coil but it's acting like it's coming in on the uh, positive lead here and the motor starts to turn. Now that wouldn't be enough wire to get enough amperage across start an engine but you get the idea. And that's a coil so when I let go it arcs on the way out as well. And uh, that's the arc that if it goes through this switch eventually kills this switch. I mean maybe, uh, maybe you get a hundred times out of it. So we've got to fix that and the idea was to fix it with a diode. See, it's not much of a spark, but let's see if we can get a diode to get that to go away. So let's just start with the relay. There's negative, and uh, that's black, and then the other side of the coil is white here. So if this is 24 volt, you can hear that relay clicking, right? 
and there's a little bit of a spark right there just ever so tiny see it's not much of a spark but let's see if we can get a diode to get that to go away put our diode here and it's going to look like we're shorting across because that looks like a short right just positive on over the negative but this diode doesn't feed that direction it feeds back the other way so let's see yeah sure enough that gets rid of our spark so now when I take it off I get little to no spark and what's happening is when the field collapses in the coil that energy being fed back comes back through the diode and is canceled by going back through the coil again it doesn't come back to what would be my switch which is this positive wire here so it's working a little bit now I can't even see that when I try it on a bigger coil so here's our bigger coil I'm going to put that side to negative and now this energizes this coil so let's try the same thing so let's put our diode in across the coil and with the strike back toward positive and there should be little to no spark over here but there's obviously still a spark it's hard to say but maybe that's a smaller spark there's with diode and this is without so I'm not sure but I think it's working a little bit now they sell big relays for starters but since I already had this one this is a 300 amp and it's a 12 volt coil I'm just gonna run my relay down to this one this one takes the bigger loads for the next one in line so it's basically three coils little coil medium coil big coil and they all collapse and I'm going to add a diode here but not on the big one I just don't have a lot of faith in the diode from that testing and I, all it is is a couple of hose clamps that I use to strap this relay or solenoid to the starter solenoid it's in a rat's nest again but it's time to test it uh, fuel on and that should have brought the solenoid up so if I hit the fuel off now yep it clicks off so that's working so let's do a start now that starter sounds funny but it's just hitting it really hard make sure those bolts are good still well the thing I don't like is it's got a lot more parts involved the thing I do like is I think it's going to be very easy on the switches and relays now okay this is the fuel on switch and there's the start button there's duplicates of these up top and they run those relays over there start and fuel and the relays now have uh, 12 volt going to them instead of 24 on their feeder line because they run the solenoid that I added to the starter as well as the solenoid that I added to the fuel solenoid and both of these are 12 volt but they let 24 volt pass through and that's what triggers these so if the instruction comes from up top then the switch throws the relay, the relay throws the bigger relay which ups it to 24 volts which throws the solenoid for the fuel and the solenoid for the starter. So that means when the fuel collapses on the solenoid coil it goes back through these much larger contacts on this 300 amp solenoid and when it collapses on that one the diode in there takes some of the load and the rest goes back to the start relay or to the switch which is a 30 amp 12 volt switch and the reason the switches up top have the relays here is because there's too much distance they there would be too much voltage drop across that so if you pushed a button up there not enough voltage or wattage would get down here to close the contactor on the starter so you put a relay here it's a remote switch you close a little switch here and fresh higher current comes in through that relay and goes to the starter solenoid so the starter solenoid closes and works love relays it's a lot of parts but hopefully it makes those switches and relays last a long time and since we started this video out with gauges let's finish with gauges these are murphy switch gauges and you see that little allen wrench screw there that changes where that little piece of metal is out there and when the needle comes in contact with that piece of metal it closes the circuit it'll set off an alarm up top and you hear that alarm just when you power the system up because the oil pressure switch 
has an alarm when the oil pressure is low and of course when the engine's off the oil pressure is low so you turn on the, end, the fuel it energizes this this starts the alarm sounding off when the engine starts and the pressure comes up above 35 psi that alarm goes off so you have the peace of mind that when the oil pressure drops out or the engine gets too hot you don't have to be staring at your gauges up there you'll hear that alarm and uh, that may save an engine now we'll get a handful of zip ties and make this thing pretty again well that didn't last long that diode i smoked it already i gave it like six or eight trial starts and that was enough for it so it's going to get taken out fail closed it burned it out so i'll take it out and see what happened to it it still starts okay to test this we set that to ohms and also diode see that's a little diode symbol there and uh it should let's just make this where it will beep yeah there it goes so it should let current through in one direction which is how it tests ohms and no it doesn't it would show a little bit of a resistance there turn around make sure it's, i don't have it backwards here and nah it is dead it is an open wire so if it failed close it burned it open and i'm not happy with the noise it's making or how it's starting listen to this here got fuel on start See, that is just noisy as hell. Now it'll start and stop. God, that sound. I'm going to leave the fuel off and just fire the starter. See, it sounds like it's coming on and dropping out. So I'm thinking maybe I'm getting the power from the battery cable and running it back around to the big solenoid to pass 24 volts through it. Maybe it's dropping it down somehow while I do that. This is the start wire coming from up above. It's 12 volt. And then 12 volt ground goes out. So it's got to be that ground or that power. And I'm thinking that solenoid is bouncing. So that'll tear it up really quick if that's what it's doing. Let me run a new power line down there that's not off the battery cable from here. See if that changes anything. Now it has its own dedicated wire off the battery. Nope same thing huh fuel off so just starter Let's jump a wire over the relay see what happens okay I had to pull the power cables off to get it to stop there that's interesting it's stuck on you know what maybe the hose clamps damaged it then the other question is how did it start when the fuel switch is off so there's a wire I jumped from, and I now have it disconnected so I can test the solenoid. Because the solenoid operates on 12 volt from this button. And I can hear it working. Watch that little piece of wire right in the middle of the screen on that nut. See that thing move? It's actually moving because of the magnetic field. Maybe the magnetic field is the problem? That coil creates such a strong magnetic field that it holds the solenoid in position. Oh my god. Really? Okay, let's try it again. Man, if that's what it is, that is so weird. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, that's not the problem. Good, because that would have been just too weird. And it started again. All right. Time to think about it some more. Um, but let's eliminate some things. The fuel switch is off. I can hear the solenoids trigger, and that's actually both solenoids, because that would trigger the one on the starter, which has no power running to it. And it would trigger this one here for the fuel solenoid, because it has no power running to it. Yeah, you can actually feel it clicking. So let's just power up the fuel side and see if the fuel solenoid is working. So that's the fuel side. And the fuel is off, but now the solenoid should work. So now the 12 volt solenoid will uh, power the big solenoid here with 24 volts, and we should see that lever come up. Yep, it does. Now, if I turn the fuel switch on there, it should maintain it up. And it does. Turn the fuel switch off, and it shuts the fuel off. So all that seems to be working fine. But when the other one flakes out, that circuit has to somehow get power. Okay, I got another theory. This solenoid 12 volt 
comes in and the 12 volt uses a ground that comes from the starter I think that's the problem it feeds the hot 24 volts out the yellow wire that fires the coil here and when it does it connects these two poles together and that makes that ground become a 24 volt positive that then yeah it adds to the voltage on the other side so there's a 12 volt difference it holds this thing up so I just need to move that from there to a real ground like over here where the starter is actually grounded let's try that okay that's the 12 volt ground now hook this back up and cross our fingers let me see fuel off so it shouldn't start and here we go yeah that's what it's supposed to do try it with fuel on oh uh, yeah that sounds so much better okay lesson careful where you take your ground from because it may become 24 volt that's cool I am so happy I figured that one out because I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight and it is dark outside that's beautiful look at that that's the moonlight reflecting off the water beautiful in the evening light in here oh that's not enough light here we go okay that's it thanks for joining us time to do the happy dance and on to something new tomorrow i think i got it all covered let me know and give me your ideas on what you think about the diodes i don't get why those didn't work i had big diodes those were like uh you know, they're 10 a10s which were oh, more amps and wattage than most others i saw online and uh it just they didn't seem to do what they're supposed to do and I, you know so give me your thoughts on that i'm probably not going to go back and do anything about it because those 300 amp solenoids that i put in between the relays and the the starter solenoid and the fuel solenoid i think that's going to do the, the trick um besides that i'm tired of working on electronics on the engine i'm running out of zip ties to put the wiring harness back together with so anyway remember if you were out in your shop and you made something send us a photo of it we want to see it what'd you make today and if you want to support sv seeker you can do that there's links in the description we have uh, patreon we have paypal and we have the sea chest foundation and don't forget to pick up your darwin he is your mascot for adventure which means get out there folks life is short take advantage of it while you got it see you next time